We have an automatic braking system, but I must know, does it work at over 100 miles per hour? Find out in this video. Hey, this is YBR with BeamNG Drive, and today we're going to be taking a look at a mod called the Driver Assistant Systems, and it's available on the ETK 800 series, the Charrier FCV, the ETK K series, and the Hirochi SBR4. It's also kind of available on the Wentworth DT40L and the Gravel H series. I'll go into that more later on. Right now, I want a vehicle that uses all the features of the mod, so we're going to go with a nice ETK K series. And then we need to make sure the driver assistant systems are enabled so it comes pre-installed on the vehicle so I don't need to change anything in the parts menu or anything like that but it's only fully activated in comfort mode so you want to make sure that the vehicle is in comfort mode before we try anything crazy and now that we've confirmed that it's in the correct mode we can try some crazy things so the first thing we're going to test is the AEB system or the automatic emergency braking system based on the name what it does should be pretty obvious in an emergency situation it'll break so for example I have completely let go of the gas and brake and I'm just coasting the car and you see it's automatically slowing it down so we don't crash into the car that was directly ahead of us. And then if they come to a complete stop it'll also make us come to a complete stop as well and it's a pretty close stop actually like it gets scary close to the car in front of me. Now it also works in a head on situation as well so for example this truck it will stop right before we make contact it waits a little bit longer than you expect to come to a complete stop though as you saw there but the important thing is no contact was made between the two vehicles it also works surprisingly well at high speed so here we go just coasting again and you can see it's slowing us down all the way to about 50 miles per hour so we can pass them and continue driving along we got this idiot who is stopping right in the middle of the road and again, the AEB system has saved me because I did not slow down at all for that pickup truck who's just being a complete idiot here. So we get past him and now I get to be the idiot because we're going to go too fast for the AEB system to save us. So we're going like 100 miles per hour <laughs> and I didn't even give it a chance to react. I was still flooring it when I hit them and if you're accelerating hard, it will not automatically brake. I have absolutely no idea what they were doing standing in the middle of the road at a complete stop. I didn't expect that. Anyways, here's a quick look at the damage and then I'll reset it and try this one more time. The goal is to have the AEB system activate, but it doesn't slow us down quite enough to a completely avoid a collision. Alright, so we're now going nearly 100 miles per hour, so I'm just letting the car coast now. So you see, it does hit the brakes a little bit. But there's such a big speed difference between the two vehicles, it just simply does not have enough time to react. It seems like it can go to about a 30 mile per hour delta. Anything higher than that will usually cause an impact. Sometimes it's a very light impact, sometimes it's a little harder like what you saw with the pickle. That is getting super close without crashing into them actually. I will still bump them because I can though. Alright, this guy's coming to a complete stop, so there's an immediate crash. Again, that section right there, the AI is just like, Oh, I gotta go look at the scenery, so let me stop right in the middle of the road, you maniac. Alright, here we go, here's a good one. Will it stop? Okay. Do not always rely on the AEB systems, because sometimes it just doesn't do anything at all, and you'll slam right into them. Okay, I got a couple more tests I want to do before we move on to the next feature. So you saw earlier that it does work for head-on collisions. The impressive thing is how fast you can be going for it to still work in a head-on collision. Here we are going about 50 miles per hour, and you see it'll make us come to a complete stop right before impact. It worked perfectly in that situation. And by the way, right before it slows down, there's a little beep to warn you that it's going to activate. So I'll go ahead and let you listen to what that sounds like. didn't quite stop in time and also you might have noticed it was beeping when we were going in reverse right what was up with that well it also has an automatic braking system for going in reverse but it works a little bit differently so the one you are seeing there it works at all speeds the one in reverse only works at speeds below 15 miles per hour so for example I can go and just rear in people like that all day but Let's say, for example, I was just doing a normal maneuver in the middle of a parking lot and I wasn't paying attention to what I was doing and I was flying into a building at way too fast the speeds, it will make us come to a stop. On the other hand, though, if we go out of building too fast going forward, that automatic braking system will do absolutely nothing. So there are different systems designed for different situations. 
The first one is for driving at normal speeds in traffic, and then the second one is for backing up your car in the middle of a parking lot. So both are finely tuned to try to avoid accidents in the situations that are most likely to occur. Did we actually touch the wall? Ever so slightly, but we were going at a pretty decent speed. It's only supposed to work at 15 miles per hour or less, and the speedometer is reading like 30, I think. So that's kind of surprising. So here's a question. What if we slide the rear end at something? That did not activate it. Okay, well, now we know. And I would say that's a good thing because you don't want it activating randomly when you're drifting around a corner making you come to a stop for no good reason. And I have no idea what the car's doing right now, it's just the normal electronic stability control that's messing it up. I don't think the mod was causing that because the brake lights never turned on unless I was actually hitting the brakes. And as far as I know, all the mod really does is it activates and deactivates the brakes. So the next thing I want to do requires just a pinch of setup. So I'm going to change maps, set everything up, and I'll be back when we're ready. Here we have what appears to be a pretty ordinary situation. We have two pickles that are parked on the side of the road, although neither of them have their engines off, and also it's in a blue zone. Does that mean the parking zone, or does that mean the chicken parmigiano pickup zone? I don't know, I don't live in Italy. But either way, we have two cars there, I am over here in this green car, and I want to park between them. The first thing you want to do is you want to make sure you're in realistic gearbox mode, and then if you hit 8, it'll activate the rear camera. And not only is it a camera with a little grid on it, it'll even point in the direction the car is pointed. So you can see when we're turning to the left, and then you can also see when we're turning to the right, and we don't even have to hit the brakes here. We just let it coast, and it'll hit the brakes for us when it gets nice and close to the vehicle. And that camera angle looks kind of funny, doesn't it? We parked perfectly fine between the two vehicles. We pick up our chicken parmesan or pizza or whatever Italian food I'm eating, and then I try to eat it in the car as I drive because somebody told me that was legal. But is it smart? No, as we drive into the ditch and then fly out of the ditch and crash into a tree, completely ruining the vehicle. This is why you don't drink and drive or eat and drive. So here's a quick look at the damage and we are now done with this car. And going back to what I mentioned at the start of the video, I said both the Wentworth and the H series sort of have this mod. So what did I mean by that? Well, I mean, it has just the backup camera and then the camera is just a camera. It doesn't have the fancy lines which tell you which direction to go. It's just a very, very basic camera that you could look at to see what is directly behind you. And it's so high up in the air, it feels like I'm going to tip over as I'm driving. It is very, very weird to do that. Somehow, not only did we not tip over, we also ended up driving in forward for some reason. I don't even know how I managed to do that, but we're going back in reverse, going between the trees, really trying to finesse this thing, and then let's crash into some trees. We're going to go at a decent rate of speed, about 50 miles per hour, and then hello to that tree right there. Well, that was definitely a different angle than I'm used to seeing for a crash. That was very interesting. Whoa, that did a lot more damage than I expected. I wasn't going that fast, was I? I think I just hit the tree at a really awkward angle to cause as much damage as possible for those speeds. And at this point, you've really seen everything that the mod can do, but I'm having fun messing with it, so I'm going to mess around just a little bit more with a nice fast ESBR 800 with a bunch of traffic driving all over the place. So yes, it's pretty much the same thing we did before, but it's a completely different environment because there are all these tight roads, which... I think it'll work fine in. After we do this, we can also check it out in some high speed areas as well. I heard it beeping there, but it didn't actually slow me down, which is a little bit unusual. Oh! Hey, that time, I think it legit just saved me because I could not see around that corner before it would probably been too late. I heard the beeps, and then I also saw the brakes right as I hit them. So I think it braked just a little bit sooner than I would have even done. That is the first legitimate situation where the AEB system would have actually saved me from a collision. Now that is impressive. I'm glad that we decided to do some extra testing through here. And by the way, if I did that dumb thing where I had a random clip at the start of the video, I would be like, we have an automatic braking system. But I must know, does it work at over 100 miles per hour? Find out in this video. No. It just says that's your own fault for driving that fast on the wrong side of the road. You have to suffer the consequences. I take no responsibility for this. Again, don't always rely on it, but it can help you sometimes. And as far as I can tell, as long as the mod is installed, the assists are going to always be there no matter what on the specified vehicles. And I think that's why it's designed to only work in comfort mode. Because you're not going to be doing super aggressive driving most of the time in comfort mode because it really tames down the vehicle. So that's the one situation where you'd want it. And then if you don't want it, just simply go into sport mode and that'll work fine. It does also not work when you're drifting into a car, which makes sense. 
because they would have to have cameras specifically on the side of the car to track when you're drifting, which just sounds like a complete waste of money. Oh, why'd you let it crash? It just casually rolled into it. I guess it's just because it was coming at an angle, it confused it just a little bit. It saw it, it knew the car was there, and then the IQ dropped to 20, and it did a little bit of a dumb. It's working again, though. Worked perfectly on that pickle. Going along the highway, here's another good chance. Does it work on this, Grand Marshal? Excellent. See, it really does work most of the time. And it's already been updated once since it was released, which makes it where the automatic braking never activates if you have more than 40% throttle. So I could definitely see it getting even better in the future. And coincidentally, that is basically an example of that. It didn't seem to slow down at all because I was holding the throttle the whole time. Here, I'm not holding the throttle, so it slows down just as you'd expect it to. And this car is not driving well at all, so we're just gonna bounce off of the walls until something happens. Either it'll slow itself down before I crash into a car, or we'll just crash into a car. Or I'll crash into a wall because I have no steering at all. Ooh, actually, I just had an interesting idea. I wonder, does the reverse AEB system work when you're backing up over a curb? Because that would be a very logical place for it to activate, especially when you have a car like this. This car sits so low to the ground that if you hop a curb, it could do damage to the bumpers on the vehicle and it can cause probably some serious damage if it catches it wrong. So that'd be a very interesting thing to test, I think. And we should have some sort of curb coming up here shortly, right? Oh yeah, look at all that curb. Where's a good one to use though? I don't want a building behind it. That is perfect. I could not have asked for a better place to test this. And we'll go ahead and make sure we have a little bit of distance between us so it has time to react and then all we gotta do is just back it up and see what happens. Oh, look at that! It does work for curbs and it works perfectly. It stopped us just before we went up on it. That is nice. Now, I don't think it works in the other direction though. I think it's just for reverse. It'll stop you from hitting the curb. If you're going forward, it ain't gonna stop you. We're gonna go about the same speed, maybe a little bit faster, but I'm just listening. I didn't hear a single beep and I didn't see the brakes light up at all, so yeah. It really does seem to use a completely different system going in forward and reverse, and I think that's a good thing. Now, I don't actually have a car that has something like this, so I don't know if they beep on curbs going forward, but I don't think it would because sometimes you have speed bumps, and you wouldn't want it freaking out on a speed bump and stopping for no reason in the middle of the road. That would just be really awkward and confusing for their driver, and I think it would just cause more problems than it'd be worth. So, what I've seen from this, I am very happy with how it's performed. Anyways, I think that's going to do it for this video. Until next time, this has been YBR, and remember, if you like or dislike this video, I will know. I can tell by when the automatic emergency braking system activates. So do the right thing, and I'll see you next time.